Hey there YouTube, in this video I'm going to show you how we're going to cram this SSD into this thin client. Notice how the SSD itself is pretty big. We're going to use this and we're going to have to also fit this um, extension cable in there. Um, so yeah, let's get started. I'm going to tear this apart and show you how it's done. Okay, so I've gone ahead and taken off the screws that I need to take off to get into this. So as you can see here, the little cover in the back in the top has uh, three screws, and this chassis piece right here has five. So and and it opens up like this. You go back, and then you have to take off the speaker, and that's it. So I'm gonna put this aside over there. And uh, here you can see that this is a, uh, a slightly more modern um, thin client that I normally have shown in the, in, the, in the channel. This one has a quad core AMD APU and uh, four gigs of DDR3 RAM. So you can see there. I believe you can go up to eight gigs, but I haven't tried that yet. And right here we have the solid state drive. This unit has a 16 gig serial ATA uh, it's called an MLC SATA module, and it, it's 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 a it, it lets you uh, use a, any standard SATA SATA drive in there. But as you can see, there is very little space in here. It's very very narrow. It's like two fingers, two fingers wide. So we we have to we have to cram our our solid state drive in there. So as you can see here. This is the solid state drive that I'm going to be using. It's a 240 gig uh, SATA SSD and it barely fits in there. So as you can see here, this is a plastic case. So that's nice. There's, there's very little chance that it'll, it'll short things out. But even then the, the cable will uh, will be sandwiched. So as you can see here, there's very little room in there for the serial ATA drive, but it does fit. Um, so yeah, we'll be, we'll be able to make it work. Uh, looking at some other things in here, uh, you can see that there is a, a a PCI Express slot right there, and that I've seen these models with a a built-in Wi-Fi adapter that is plugged into that slot. Uh, I'm not sure if we can if we can put in one of those like uh, um, NVMe drives or or M2 drives in there, um, NVMe I mean or, or M2 drives, but Maybe something to, for me to try it in a future uh, uh, video. Um, I also have a, I believe that's a USB header over there. So you could also get creative with that. Um, and uh, what else? There are some other headers here, which I don't know much about. I believe this one right here is a, a custom, the one on top right there, that one, that one up there. Uh, not this one, that one. Um, is is a power power cable that goes with this other serial ATA port, but I haven't been able to find the adapter that fits there. This is another header that I'm not sure what what's what's all about. So, yeah, a lot of unknowns in this little machine, but um, but it, it is a pretty fast one. Like I said, it's a, it's a quad core, and it has a Display Port DVI uh, I, so that means I can do VGA here. And I, I can also do VGA out of the display port. And uh, it has two USB 3.0 ports, those blue ones, two USB 2.0 there, and a gigabit um, ethernet port. In the front, you have two more USB 2.0 ports and a, a headphone jack or speaker output. So it's a nice little package. And the nice thing is that, you know, once we put this 240 gig SSD in there, you can pretty much run any operating system that you'd like. You can run, it, in this case, I'm gonna be loading Windows XP, but um, you can run uh, Windows 10, you can run maybe even Windows 11, I'm, I'm not sure about that, but um, pretty much anything. Also makes a great little little Linux box, and notice that there are no there's no fan in there, so it's fully passive. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take apart Take off the uh, 
the built-in solid state drive here. Put the screw to the side. And then this comes out like that. It's a little bit difficult to do it one-handed because I'm holding the camera with the other one. But you can see here it just slides out. Come on, little guy. Come on. Come on out. Oh, I need two hands. <laughs> oh, I see what's happening. All right, there you go. All right, so yeah, this is the uh, the solid state drive. It's a 16 gig MLC SATA module by a pacer, a pacer. And uh, now what we gotta do is gotta take this guy and stick it in there. Let me see which way it goes. I think it goes like this. All right, so that's in there. And I'm gonna turn this around like this. I'm gonna wedge the cable in there and I am gonna connect the other end to the SATA drive. Let me do that in a second. There you go, connected that. So now I gotta, I'm gotta. i gonna go ahead and twist this around and, and get it nice and neat in there and show you what it looks like. All right, so what I've done is I've used the space that is over here on this side to kinda uh, hold the, the folded up wiring and as you can see here, it will work. You can see that once I put the cover on, it will close off correctly. And like I said, this is a plastic case, so that's gonna be okay. And uh, and yeah, well now uh, I also had to leave this area open because the, the speaker um, module goes there and I didn't wanna uh, accidentally damage that or, or anything, so. Um, Although there's plenty of space under on top of the memory module, but uh, um, since that all gets really warm, I, I didn't want to. Uh, it doesn't get really warm, but it gets. It's it's better to just have the wiring here where the where the drive is. It it all fits there anyway. So let me go ahead and put that cover on, and uh, and then we'll uh, we'll wrap it up and I'll load Windows afterwards. All right, so uh, I ended up flipping the SSD so that you can see the lo logo through the grill here. And but as you can see, it's fully closed, and the SSD is is sitting nice and flat against the uh, the chassis. And I've gone ahead and installed the uh, the screws. And uh, now all I have to do is stick in the uh, the uh, cover like that, and slide it forward. And I'm gonna wrap up by putting these three screws in there and you can ignore that screw that's the one that was holding the uh the SATA SATA um module but you can see here these three right here and i'm done so i'm gonna put those in set up a monitor here and uh, and load up windows okay so here i am in my little pop-up workbench and um, i've plugged in a monitor to the machine as well as this keyboard and and trackball and as you can see here, um, we have the AMD uh, SOC system on chip with an integrated HD 8330 uh, video adapter uh, running at 1.5 gigahertz. That's a quad core APU. And I got the four gigs of RAM. And then here you can see that in the SATA port zero, I have the 240 gig SSD. So it worked, it's detected and it's inside the little case. So what I'm gonna do now is I am gonna image that drive with the copy of Windows XP that I plan to use and uh, and we can go from there. So you can see here the, the BIOS is a very basic BIOS. It just lets you set up uh, you know SATA mode and um, boot from USB um, or yes or no, um, you know, power management whether the computer turns on automatically after a power failure or not. Uh, lets you set a BIOS password. 
and it, it lets you do a uh, boot order. Notice that you can do like cloud desktop, um, CDs, serial ATA ports, USB, uh, hard drives, floppy drives, uh, CDs, so and and regular LAN boot. So for now, I am gonna make it so that I can boot from a USB drive, and I will use my my little flash drive here to to image it. So. Let me do that and then uh, I'll show you the machine running. Here we are. So uh, I've gone ahead and installed Windows, as you saw, and the 240 gig hard drive is fully detected. As you can see here, I'm only using 2.5 gigs, uh, 2.7, 2.5, 2 2.7, depending on how you want to read that. And uh, there's 237 gigs left. Over here, you see that I have, it's a serial ETA, um, uh, six gigabit per second interface and uh, over here you see a little bit more information about the actual computer it's like I said it's a it's four cores uh, it's an AMD GX 415 GA that's like an APU uh, it's an AMD FX unlocked uh, CPU according to this but uh, that might be the core itself and in Inside of that, there is a an ATI Radeon HD8330. Uh, so this is actually a pretty good machine for some 3D gaming in um, in for Windows XP games because uh, that GPU is is pretty good for something that is fully passive. That means that there are no fans, no moving parts in here. So uh, if you want to play some 3D games without any noise, this is a good option. And like I said, that there's a four gigabyte DDR3 uh, memory module in there, and uh, yeah, that's it. So, if you like this kind of stuff, be sure to like the video and leave me a comment if you have any suggestions of what I can do with this machine, um, or if you'd like me to try something else. Uh, also, please subscribe so you can see other future videos or check out my other videos in in my playlists. Uh, I have videos about um, retro computers, uh, cars, um, you know, a bunch of things that I that I do. Uh, mostly lately has been computers, but uh, every once in a while I uh, I show some of uh, my car related stuff. So, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Let me know, and um, until next time, bye bye.